mean that from the day of Pentecost until the day of judgment, the church is militant. The church militant. In the day of judgment, the church will become the church triumphant. The glorious church. There is no rest. There's not a moment's rest as long as we're up on this earth for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We cannot sit back on our laurels. And we cannot sit back as Zephaniah said upon our leaves and enjoy life. This is war and war is hell. It's hell to live the Christian life because we're fighting, 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 continually fighting day and night. This is the church militant. What kind of soldier are you? What kind of army? What kind of church would we have if we had to depend on you? What kind of meeting would we have if we had to depend on you? What kind of attendance would we have if everybody attended like you did? What kind of finances would we have if everybody gave like you give? What kind of knowledge would we have if everybody studied like you studied? I ask myself all the time, what kind of preaching would we have if everybody preached like you preach? This is why I preach like I preach. I believe the church would be better off if everybody preached like I preached. I believe the church would be better off if everybody studied like I studied. I believe the church would be better off if everybody had as much backbone as I've got. I believe this. I don't have as much as I would like to have. I wish I had more time to study. I wish I had more money to give. I wish I had more of everything that's right to do. But I'm simply saying that I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got. Those of us who have to have little have to do a lot with the little that we've got. And that's what we're trying to do. Right. And when these people who have a lot do a little or do nothing with what they've got, it's a sad day in the history of the church. And no wonder, ladies and gentlemen, that the Israelites had so much trouble. They wouldn't have had any trouble. They wouldn't have wondered and lost all those people for 40 years at the very outset if they'd have walked in and taken it like God said. You can take it, but 10 of them were sniveling, whining, coward, and they came back and said, we can't take them. They're giants. We're afraid of them. We can't take them. And the people just melted before them and said, we're not going to go up and fight those people. Amen. They tuck tail and run. That's like the church. Grasshopper complexes. Right. Look at it. How many of them did they lose in those 40 years? Caused poor old Moses to lose his opportunity to go into the land of Canaan because he got disgusted with them. And not only that, though, for a thousand years thereafter, they continually had trouble because they didn't do what God told them to do. They married with them. They intermixed with them. They had children with them. And what could they do? Nothing but bed down with them. Right. All through David and all through Solomon and all through those tribes until finally God carried them off the land and carried them into Babylonian captivity because they didn't do what He told them to do a thousand years ago. Why are we having trouble in the church? Because we have brought sectarians into our midst that don't know what the church is and has no respect for it. And they have muffled and stifled and shut the mouth of preachers. We've got a bunch of half-baked, good-for-nothing, infidelic men serving as elders that won't let preachers preach if they wanted to. We're not going to have it. I've been called in. I know. I can understand these little fellows that are maybe not as bold as I am. These fellows call you back and say, Now, Brother Rudd, we're not going to have that kind of talk. You're not going to preach this and you're not going to preach that. You don't tell Don Rudd what to preach. Wasting your time. You say, Brethren, if we're going to fight for God Almighty, if we're going to be a soldier of God Almighty, we've got to have it. We've got to have faith. Why do we stand? Brother Lud, where do you get your boldness? Where do you get your strength? Why are you not afraid? I hear you say all the time, and I believe it because I've watched you. You're not afraid of the devil. How come you're not afraid of him? Because I've got a shield around me. Just like Paul said, I've got a shield of faith. The person who believes what he's doing, you've heard me say, you can spit on him. You can ridicule him. 
You can make fun of him. You can pelt him with rocks. You can throw rotten eggs at him. You can hit him and, and spot his suit with rotten tomatoes. You can cut the tires on his top of car. You can throw him in prison. You can shackle him. You can kill him. But you're not going to close his mouth. Brethren, there was a time right here in Nashville, Tennessee, when our preachers came in here to hold me that they were guilty <coughs> with rotten eggs. I know preachers personally that stood right here in Davidson County and these surrounding areas preaching the gospel that when they turned their heads, they were hit on the side of the head with a rotten egg. I know preachers that went out after the services at night to get into the car and find out that all four of their tires were slashed on the car. I know out in Texas and Oklahoma when we began to evangelize that those old roughies and rowdies out there would ride up with their horses and rope the poles of tents and pull those uh, tent poles out and the whole tent collapsed right on the audience and those preachers. I know all about it. That's the kind of preaching we used to have. I never will forget old brother Barrett went out into the Indian Territory. The last haven of the outlaws. I'm talking about Oklahoma. He walked up in the pulpit, reached in his pocket, he didn't pull out a watch. Reached over in this pocket. He didn't pull out a New Testament. He reached in this pocket and he pulled out a loaded six gun. And he laid it right there. Reached in this pocket and he pulled out another. And laid it right there. Two loaded pistols. He said, I've come to preach. I intend for you to listen to me. I don't advocate that extreme measure. But that's the kind of men we have to put time back. That's the kind we have. <laughs> Old John O'Dowd went out to Clinton, Oklahoma, held a meeting. While he was there, a new bar opened in town. One of the elders had a bakery. They put an ad in the paper, every business in town welcoming this new bar. John O'Dowd got in the full pit with this under his arm. He unraveled it. The elder was sitting right in the front seat. He jumped out of the pulpit right down on top of him. He rammed that newspaper at his face. He said, is that you? He said, if you move the newspaper where I can see, I'll tell you. He said, you don't have to see, I'll tell you. I know who you are and everybody else knows who you are. You've got a bakery in this town. You claim to be an elder. And you write in a complimentary ad to welcome a bar coming up in town. He said, I'll tell you what's going to happen to you. He said, we're going to withdraw from you this morning before that, before this community knows how sorry you are. He jumped up and doubled his fist. He said, I'll knock your head off. John said, I don't doubt it. Somebody as low down as you would do anything. That's the kind of preaching we used to have. You see what I'm talking about? Right. That's what's wrong with the church. We're afraid. We don't have any soldiers. We're afraid of the enemy. God said, love not the world. He said, stand. Stand. With all. Stand. Withstand. Is that what we said last night? Right. Don't put your hands to the plow and look back. You don't have enough nerve to be a Christian. Throw up your hands and tell the world you're not a Christian. You don't intend to be a member of the church and stand up for the church. Get out of the church. Get in or get out. Get on or get off. This is what Elijah said on Mount Carmel. I'm tired of fooling with you people. He says, I don't want you to get on one side or the other. If God is God, bow down to it. If Baal is God, worship Him. Amen. When he got through, he had 850 of those false prophets. Then I saw so many pussy little people come around here and tell me, Brother Rudd, I think you're just a little bit hard. The language you're using, you better be thankful to God that you're sitting under Don Rudd and not Elijah. God showed us how to take Jericho, but we couldn't take Ai. Jesus told us how to take care of the devil, but we can't do it. But Brother Rudd, I'm weak. I just can't stand it. The devil's just after me all the time. No, I don't think the devil's after you. I think the devil's already got you. you right. know what I, think. I don't think he's after you. He's got you. Right. You just wish to God that he was after you. That would make you feel a little bit good that he's acting. No, he's got you. What could you do more for the devil than you're not doing right now? 
You're not giving. You're not attending services. You're not working. You're not praying. You're not teaching. You're not studying. Tell me what else you can do for the devil that you're not doing right now. See what I'm talking about? Preaching to me? I'm preaching to anybody that it hits. See that? Anybody that it hits. Brethren, we've been playing games too long. <coughs> Why don't you repent of your sins and get yourself right right now? we got work to do. See, that was just a small thing. 50 by 100. We've got an entire world that we've got to conquer. I didn't even draw this world into sections of tribes, which are churches of the Lord, because we can't have churches until we've got individuals. Until I can get some individuals with some backbones, we can't build any churches. You see what I'm talking about? Man. Let's conquer ourselves. How in the name of reason can I conquer somebody else when I can't even control myself? You see that? How can you get out here and, and have the face and the spunk and the nerve and the gall to get up here and tell somebody else what they ought to do when you're not doing it yourself? At least trying to make an effort. Right. And the audience this morning, your seventh invitation, while together we stand in saying, invite you to come.